I gave up on telling chemistry jokes because I couldn't get a reaction. That's why I'm here testing out new reactions. Hey DSA, I'm Trenton, and today we will be going over exactly what chemical and physical changes are, and in the spirit of space night, we will be putting these two reactions to rockets just to see how they compare. A classic example of this is our vinegar and baking soda experiment. When the two are combined, a chemical change happens. This means that substances are combined to create new substances as atoms are rearranged. There is evidence of this by the heat that is produced and the gas that is emitted. An example of this would be when hydrogen dioxide, or H2O, which is obviously water, changes its form. We know it is water, but think of it when it is frozen. Its chemical makeup is the same as when it is a liquid. Now for the rockets. Today, we have two of them. We have one featuring our chemical chains of vinegar and baking soda, and the other featuring the more popular combination of Mentos and Coke, which is our physical chains. And now for the Mentos. Believe it or not, Mentos surfaces are actually not smooth. On the Mentos surface, there are actually tiny pits that pull in carbon dioxide as it passes through the Diet Coke, which results in the gratifying reaction when you mix the two together. Now it's time to test the rockets. We will see which one has the most effective one. We will determine this by seeing which one reacts the fastest and which one provides the better launch for the rocket. Oh! <laughs> that was awesome. Just like our advances in space exploration. And uh, by the way, can you help me clean this up? Worth a try. Well, cleaning up, this is Trenton Thomas, reporting for Create TV. Ahoy, mateys. Me name be Trenton, and me be here to tell you about International Talk Like a Pirate Day, which is celebrated September 19th, 2021. Abash G. Today, me be telling you about the history of this holiday and how you can start talking like a pirate so you can become a salty sea dog like me, you land lovers. One key way you can celebrate International Talk Like a Pirate Day is, well, talking like a pirate, which we will learn with this wonderful book made by yours truly, How to Talk Like a Pirate. I'm going to need my reading glasses for this one. <laughs> Much better. <laughs> um, let's see here. Uh, okay. Ah, forget it. They never taught us how to read in pirate school anyway. Now, let's go over some pirate vocabulary. Any pirate worth their salt should know these words and phrases. For instance, refer to your family and friends as mates and greet them with a simple ahoy. Next, R should be used in a variety of situations. You can use R in agreement or if you stub your toe. <coughs> to take your talk to the crow's nest, you could try not articulating. To further your salt, talk with a raspy deep voice like this and growl and scowl at anybody whenever you can. However, be careful with your voice and maybe try drinking some herbal tea or water at the end of the day. Get in your sea legs now. Hopefully you're ready to sail the seven seas come this Sunday. Remember, practice your pirate talk so you can hopefully become a salty sea dog like me. This is Salty Trenton, hollering from Create TV. Good morning, DSA. Today is March 14th which marks Pi Day. But it's not the kind of pie you eat. Today is all about the mathematical version of pie. Today, we will be going over the history of this mathematical term, the history of its holiday, and how you too can celebrate it. According to Britannica, pi is the ratio of the circumference of a circle to its diameter. The symbol that represents pi was created by British mathematician William Jones in 1706. Now, this symbol didn't catch on until Swiss mathematician Leonard Euler noticed. Once this happened, the new symbol started to catch on. Pi is irrational, so its digits do not repeat. When a number is irrational, it means that it is not equal to the ratio of any two whole numbers. Because of all of this, 
Approximations like 3.14 and 22 over 7 must be made. Pi's origins go further back than the 18th century. According to Britannica, in 2000 BC, the Babylonians used 3.125 to approximate pi. They discovered this value by calculating the perimeter of a hexagon inside of a circle and assuming that the ratio of the hexagon's perimeter to the circle's circumference was 24 over 25. There are lots of fun ways you can celebrate Pi Day. For example, one way you can celebrate Pi Day is, well, eating pie. And if you're feeling extra, you can throw pies at people. And if you're feeling extra, extra, extra energized, then you can throw pies at yourself. <laughs> Whatever floats your boat, I guess, or in this case, whatever floats your pie. Well, come on, I thought it was funny. Well, no matter how you decide to spend Pi Day, I hope you have a great one. Maybe we'll recite some digits of pie and definitely eat some pie. Until next time, this is Trenton Thomas, reporting from Create TV. After Private Iron Donovich. I'm here because one of your students is a victim of a crime, and I need a list of everybody at the scene. Ron Donovan, we've met. Obviously. I have you in third period. You are currently... Looking for a missing notebook. And inhabiting my office. What's the student's name? Uh, she didn't say... But she did say that she's in your 8th period, and if it helps, she writes in some kind of notebook. Uh, what does the notebook look like? Yeah, she didn't say that either. So you want me to look for a notebook that you don't know what it looks like for a student whose name you do not know? Well, I, I guess. <laughs> nope, not here. Come back when you have... Names. names! Right, names and description. Got it, Chief. Name? Alice Robinson. Oh! Where were you at 319 on Wednesday? What? Where were you during the last few minutes of 8th period on Wednesday? Huh? Why'd you take the notebook? What notebook? Where is it now? Um... Missing? No, checks out. Free to go. And I've taken some of the toughest work in my detective career, but I have finally found the culprit of the missing notebook case. Now, if you'll pay your attention to the screen, you'll see the victim posing with her most prized possession, her secret notebook. But if you take a closer look, then you'll see... <laughs> look away. Look away. Nothing to see here. <laughs> there we go. Ryan Butterscotch! Some kids like electric trains and some kids like to use their brains to earn a university degree. I don't share their thirst for knowledge. I don't need to go to college. Me, I see it all on TV. Hello, DSA. My name is Trenton Thomas, and I played Mike TV in DSA's production of Willy Wonka Jr. Today, I will be telling you about my experience playing this role, and I hope that you feel inspired to take up acting too after you hear my experience. Playing Mike TV was definitely an interesting experience. I say that because I had to be a really interesting, different kind of villain. Now, I've played your average villain where I was stealing something from a bank or you know, trying to capture someone or something like that. But this was my first role where I had to be really like kind of- Smack whack, dead, did you see him die? Snotty nosed. For example, I told my stage mother to, and I quote, shut her pie hole. I shut you? your pie hole, toots. Didn't I tell you not to interrupt? Which is something I've never really done before or really been in that territory, but it was a lot of fun. I got to insult a lot of my castmates, which was something very interesting, and it was honestly kind of a fun experience because it was something new. And another thing that was different about playing this role was the songs that I had to sing. Now, it wasn't my first time singing solo, but the notes that I had to hit were quite high for my vocal range, so it did challenge me to push myself when it comes to my voice. 
So after a lot of practice, I was able to hit some of the higher notes and put on a good show.